Hello and thank you for joining us on our second episode of our series Meet Our DJ. DJ, today I will be speaking to the zesty Sarah Giggle. But before I start, my name is China Lawan. I am the founder and CEO of the award-winning global female DJ agency, We Run the World Female DJ Agency Limited. I... I started We Run The World Agency in 2012 with the main concept to raise the awareness of female DJs worldwide. If you missed our episode last week, I was speaking to the bubbly Suki Ray. You can listen to the podcast on our SoundCloud and that's We Run The World Female DJ Agency on our SoundCloud. Before I carry on, just want to shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the wonderful, talented Jenny Gareth Global. We will be giving one lucky viewer one, one hour one-to-one with the talented Jenny today via Zoom. So please stay locked, stay tuned and our lovely zesty Sarah will be telling one lucky viewer how you guys can be able to get the session with Jenny. So let's bring in Sarah. Let's bring in Sarah. Hi there, China. Hi, how are you? Yes, not too bad, not too bad. Fantastic, how thank are you, you. Not too bad, thank you for joining us. I know you're a busy one. That's all right. <laughs> I know you're busy right. one. Thanks for giving us the time, we really okay. appreciate this. Oh, thanks for getting so, me involved. Let's... Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, we love you. We love you off. So we have to get you involved. <laughs> so how did you, so how did you get into DJing? So how did I get into DJing? I kind of fell into DJing. I'm not going to lie. I originally was um, a fire performer, a dancer. Um, I used to do different TV and things like that. And I felt like I was getting a bit old for it all, but I still wanted to be in the clubs and I still wanted to do things. So I quit what I was doing and then I was sat in the pub with the boys and they were all like, oh, we're doing a DJ competition. And I was like, oh, like that's hard because I was in a sarcastic mood. Um, and they turned around and went, why don't you do it then? And I was like, what do you mean? And they went, well, go on, you might as well. So I was like, go on then and we'll give it a month. And at the time there was a show called Fake In It. So basically you had a person that had never done a certain thing um, that would then try and do something in one month and try and become like a pro and try and be like the professional doing it. So I said, go on, like faking it, I'll give myself a month and I'll, and I'll do the competition for a laugh. So a day later, I went and bought a set of vinyl decks off a guy with some records, a mixer and everything I needed. And that's how I started DJ. And I taught myself. I had a friend give me one or two lessons and... Yeah, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. And I had to learn on CDJs and vinyl. But I wanted to be, it sounds silly, I wanted to do vinyl because you can learn as much as you can on decks. But I still think vinyl is the original way. And I think every DJ should actually experience trying to DJ on vinyl because it was so different. Um, so, yeah, within one month, I then competed in the competition for 195 DJ Comp. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't very good. Well, I was good, but I wasn't that good. I managed to mess up my last mix. So they decided to um, throw me in as a wild card for the last round, and I managed to mess up the first mix. <laughs> so it didn't quite go to plan, but they were like, you are actually really good. And for a month in, I can't believe you've learned that well. So I then kept it up, and within six months, I was playing all over the place because I... I did practice driving my family insane for eight hours a day 
I would do beat matching for three hours a day. Then I would do other styles, learning different music. If you ever saw my first record bag, you would laugh intensively for how I used to name songs. Because as a DJ, most people can remember things. I'm terrible. I can't remember people's names. If I drive somewhere, I can remember that. But I have to give myself little triggers. So my record bag was hilarious. bag was hilarious wow what an interesting um story so you know how did you feel like like after you how do you feel like now you're in djing what's what do you feel well i've been doing it 11 years now so it's kind of become like a second nature um yeah no i feel like i achieved it sounds silly it's nice to feel like I've achieved a lot because it does feel like I went from zero to everything and it, everything in between so I've played every which where and events and it's been madness for 11 years it's only now we're in lockdown I kind of realized just probably how much I've actually achieved as a DJ in my own right on my by myself so oh, that's it's so nice, nice. Yeah. to reflect back how you started and where you are right now so yeah, yeah I mean the lockdown's been re I think the lockdown has been the same for everyone, okay. really reflecting on yourself, you know, like what you've done, yeah, what you I've have achieved and where you want to go. I've been working as well, though. So I actually yeah, get a job yeah, whilst we're in lockdown. That's been different. Oh, that is, um, that is so hard working of you, Sarah. You're not, you're not joking. You're out there. Well, you know, do you know what it is? I love it's that. I knew that we were going to, that DJ has become like a kind of grey area. Um, just because no one really knows what's going on with clubs at the minute and with music and with DJing. And it's just, I thought, you know what, I'd rather have something than nothing. So I did that. And then, um, yeah, I've also been mixing in a whole new way because I've been doing live baking for my niece and nephew. So that's been a bit random. So not just mixing in the, on the decks, I'm now mixing in the kitchen. So that's been funny. Okay. I've enjoyed that, to be fair, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've been, we've been checking you, you've been checking your mixing, we loved it, it was like, wow, we love the Instagram layout, we thought that's fantastic, that's really great. Aww. So you've also released a track two weeks ago, tell us more yeah, about no, your well, production no, a week ago, side. A week ago. Yeah, so... Um, a week ago? Yeah, it was about a week ago now, so yeah, I decided to start producing tunes to try to further my side on the house side, because I'm an open format DJ, which means I play everything. Um, which is sometimes hard because when you're known to play everything, you kind of don't go off into specific avenues. So it's harder to get work in one sense and easier to get work in another. And I kind of, I love playing my house and my garage. I love my 90s R&B. So that makes it really hard because I'm kind of torn between two different genres and two different things. So I started the label because when I bought tunes out, I found it hard dealing with labels. And I wanted my input a lot more than what I could get. So I started the label, which is Random Antics. And it's, it's, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I thought, oh, it can't be that hard. <laughs> uh, the press releases, the creating the artwork, doing the logos, doing the designs. It's like, wow, I didn't actually think it would be that much. But it is. But it's been nice to actually have it as my own entity and to have my own little bubble of it. And... Although it takes a long time to progress with it all, it's nice when you get some great feedback from some good DJs that you respect, so that's cool. But it definitely isn't as easy as I thought it would be. Um, but it's nice because I wanted it all to be in my entity, to my, not to myself, but as in, if I ever leave music, I haven't got like eight different labels. I've got my own label, which is, it was a nice moment to be able to have my own label, I'm not going to lie. But it does Aww. still make it quite hard because I'm still open format as a DJ, so it's kind of still tricky. So moving away, because you did touch on, you know, DJs that you inspired. So who are some of the DJs that have inspired you? Yeah, do you know what? There's been, there's been, well, obviously where I used to dance, one of my great inspirations, just because of how he mixes and how amazing talented he is, definitely DJ EZ. He was like a pioneer in garage music. How he played was very yeah, different. I remember. I love watching him play. He's great to watch. Boiler Room Sets, that is the one. If you're learning to DJ, go and watch his Boiler Room Sets because the talented difference and what he does is crazy. 
Um, another few people that inspire me is definitely Majestic. Majestic is on Kiss. He's fabulous. He was an MC. He's a DJ. He's I love him to pieces. He's amazing. He's someone that's always helped me. Another person that I adore to pieces, and I come so glad that he's finally getting like not the breakthrough because he's always been so talented, but as in he's actually getting the acknowledgement for what he does because he works endlessly. Sammy Porter. Amazing, amazing guy, such a talented DJ. Just, I've got so much respect for the guy. Yeah, it's unreal. Him. Like, he's a yeah. true inspiration. Sam is amazing. And he will take my call at four in the morning and tell me what I've done wrong with something. So, Yo, yeah. he's a cool guy. Really cool he's guy. I've, I've met amazing. him before in China White. He used to be a resident oh, DJ oh. in China White. So, he's like literally, he's Fantastic. someone I grew up around. So he's amazing. Like we've always DJed in the same places and I used to actually work for his company. <laughs> so that's pretty oh, wow. crazy. But um, yeah, um, Sam Divine obviously for the girls has made a massive influence to a lot of girls. I'd say she's an influence more as I love her style and I love what she's managed to achieve. Cause she's, I've met her on vague occasions, but it, She's just one that I think's done loads for women in music, so I feel like that's great. And then SKT, I love that he's got an amazing little dog at the minute. <laughs> no, I love that he's got some fabulous tunes out there. He's always worked hard. He always gives me time of day when I need him to, if I need him to. So there's certain people that I've got a lot of time for because they're still so humble, yet they're, they're massive artists. Sent batteries so it keeps going. Kicking my signal. <laughs> I'm trying to see if so I can tell us see my little events. charging lead. I can't see That's my charging right, right, hang on. I can bad. see the charging lead. I'm going to run and grab it. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to run and grab okay. it. You can <laughs> still hear me, but I've got the lead. Do you know why? Because I don't want the battery to die. Mid sentence. Here we go. Ta da. See, look, that was quick. I'm going to plug it in <laughs> so I don't lose you. Because there's nothing like losing okay. your mid-sentence. There we go. Thank you. you feel... So tell Ooh. us at least, tell us a few of the events that you've, you've been blessed to play at. Tell us some of your favourite events you've done. Oh, some of my favourite events as a DJ. Well, obviously, your Morphe store. I love playing the Morphe stores in Manchester. I'm really grateful to you for getting me there. I love it. <laughs> um, I've done four seasons in Ibiza. I've done Marbella, Turkey, Dubai, India. India touring was amazing. The people are crazy, but I loved it. Yeah. Um, I've recently been to the Maldives and played for a few months. That was pretty cool, pretty different. Um, not quite the experience I thought it would be, but it was nice. And I loved swimming with the turtles and everything, so that was pretty cool. But, um, Fantastic. I've been quite blessed, really, as a DJ. That's really, really good to hear. So who would you like to DJ with? Who would you like to DJ with? I know you've told us who, you, who has inspired you. Is there any one of those DJs you would like to DJ with? Is there any, anybody else? Do you know what? Uh, to be fair, I'd like to DJ with any of them because I've got so much time for them all. And I think, do you know what? Any DJ that's a good DJ and loves what they do, because when you've got someone that you to watch, whether they're new to it or whether they're, been doing it for years so just anyone that's got a true love for the music you still there China? you don't really mind you don't mind you just you, you want to DJ with anyone yeah yeah just someone that in, is, enjoys what they do really? so that again you caught up up there I said you don't. So I said to you, who would you like to DJ with? I mean, you've told us who inspired you. Is there any anyone out there that you would like to DJ with? Yeah, no, I said they do, and they they enjoy the music that they play because it sounds silly if you've got a lady that when you're DJing with the person. That's always amazing. Okay, okay. Just shout out to Jenny Gareth for sponsoring this episode. Um, Sarah has already told Sarah is going to how you can get um, so to, you can have the opportunity to, 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 to meet Jenny one to one with Jenny do you want to tell them how they can win a 
you know, the competition with Jenny Gareth today? Yeah, all they've got to do today to win the competition with Jenny is name one of the five people that inspire me. So you could say any one of the DJs that inspires me. Uh, we had DJ EZ, we've got Sam Divine, we've got Majestic, Sam Porter or SKT. If you name any of them below, the winner gets picked and will be put up later on so you can win your hour Zoom session with the amazing Jenny Garrett. Absolutely. After the break, Sarah's going to be back and she's going to be DJing for us live today. So, um, absolutely fantastic. We're going to love it. We're going to love it. Well, thank you so much for, for, for um, taking the time out to actually speaking to us. We Thanks really, for getting really appreciate me in. it. Definitely. Thank you so much. And we will see you shortly. Thank you. See you soon. See ya.